Okay. I think we're live. We are live. Are we live? Can, some, can someone let me know if we are live? Um, I've never actually done a YouTube live before, so this is a first for me. Um, normally we, we do, we've done lives on Zoom, we've done lives on Facebook, I think. I don't think... Hi! Yes! Yes, I am officially live, and we are all live, and we're all alive. Life meeting life. This is wonderful. Okay, um, so welcome. Uh, welcome to this live, my first ever, li I think it's my first ever live YouTube broadcast. Um, some of you know me, some of you don't. My name is Jeff Foster. I'm an author. Some people call me a spiritual teacher. I don't really know what a spiritual teacher is. I don't know what spirituality is anymore. If spirit for me, if spirituality is anything, it's it has everything to do with with bowing to the ordinary moments, the 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 simple ordinary moments of our lives. You know, eating, walking, uh, sitting, running, going to a shop, buying some bread. You know, feeling joy, feeling pain. This 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 vulnerable, sensitive. Human experience is, is to me, is a complete expression of the divine, of oneness, of God, of wholeness, of non-duality, of enlightenment, whatever we want to call it. Because in the end, the words don't really matter. I think we get with this spirituality stuff, we get so st stuck on words, we get so hooked on the words, and we start fighting over what words mean. <clears throat> you know, I've done a lot of that in my time what the word consciousness means, what the word awareness means, what the word spirituality means. So anyway, having said that, some people call me a spiritual teacher. Um, some of you may have been on my uh, Facebook live session, I think it was a couple of days ago, I've completely lost track of time, where I revealed the, this wonderful news that I've just had a, well, me and my partner have just had a baby girl. Um, so for the past few days we've been completely in completely present with you know in that world um it's yeah it's been an incredibly beautiful heartbreaking joyful humbling experience and and again such a teaching of presence my goodness you know when when your partner is is <laughs> you know in labor and, and giving birth you know it's it's uh what can you do but just just be there and be present and be attentive and and so it was such a great teaching for me and Alice was so incredibly beyond courageous beyond brave I don't have any words for it um, anyway I could say so much about that but I don't think you're I'm not sure most of you are here to to hear about my my um my personal life um so this. What are we doing? Is it a webcast? What's this called? What should we call it? An experience. Um, I've called it let go of letting go. Letting go of letting go. I think that's what I've called it. I don't ever remember my titles. I don't remember much. So I thought I would start just by reading out um, a little poem of mine from my book. I think this is from my book. Um, no, I have no idea which book this is from or even if it's in a book. But it's called Let Love Go. And I've kind of, I feel like I've distilled the essence of this teaching into, in, into a poem. So let me just read this and then I'll say a few words. And then maybe we can do a little meditation together on this. And then I have a, a few little things to say. Uh, I want to tell you about a, um, a webinar <clears throat> that you're all invited to, a completely free webinar that I'm doing next Tuesday. Anyway, I'll talk about that later. Let, let love go, this is called. Let love go. <clears throat> Forget about transcending the body. Love it instead. Let go of the idea of letting go. Let go of the idea of letting go. Instead, let love go deep. Let love go deep into the tender places, the parts that ache. Inhale into your sadness. Let your fear move deep within you. Bow to your uncertainty. There is an untouchable place in you that fearlessly allows itself to be touched. This is the paradox that we'll be talking about, the human and the divine. 
breakable, unbreakable, broken, unbroken. Here, even your even your unworthiness has worth. I want I want you to hear that. Here, even your unworthiness has worth. And that old feeling that you're unlovable, it is lovable here. Presence is the container, never the contained. There is so much room in you, friend, so much room. The unknown embraces all that is known. In the certainty of yourself, even uncertainty can be held like a newborn. Newborn. Oh. There is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you, including the idea that there's something wrong with you. Even that isn't something wrong with you. So stop trying to love yourself. Simply be the self that loves. I'll say that last line again. So stop trying to love yourself. Simply be the self that loves. So letting go. Um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people, a lot of spiritual people, spiritual teachers talk about letting go. A lot of healers talk about letting go or um, releasing, being free from, as if that was the goal of spirituality, if, as if that was the goal, was to release, was to let go. So what, what do we really mean? Let's be honest. What do we really mean when we're talking about letting go? Oh, I want to let go of my sadness. I want to let go of my pain. I want to let go of my desires. I want to let go of certain thoughts, certain intense thoughts, dark thoughts. I want to let go. I want to let go. And so we try to let go and we read books and we go to seminars and retreats and ashrams and gurus. And I'm not saying any of that is wrong. Of course it's not. That's also part of the expression. But the question is, what are we really looking for when we say, I want to let go? I want to let go of thoughts. And if we're really honest, I think in many cases, um, what we really mean by I want to let go of sadness is that I don't want the sadness. It's actually an expression of resistance. It's actually an expression of resistance to life, resistance to thoughts, re resistance to sensations, resistance to feelings. You know, imagine if you imagine um, this is a nice metaphor I use sometimes on retreats. If you imagine um, these parts of yourselves, like a yourself, a, a thought could be a thought, could be a feeling, could be a sensation, could be a a grief that you're carrying within you. It could be an anger. It could be a, a deep, like I said in the poem, a deep feeling of uncertainty, of doubt. Imagine that. Imagine that that form is like a little child like a young child, and imagine that that child is, is knocking on the door of the present moment. You know, it wants to come in to the present moment. Sadness wants to come into the present moment. Doubt wants to come into the present moment. Fear sometimes wants to come into the present moment. Joy also wants to come in. Um, thoughts want to come in. So they knock on the door of the present moment, and that you open the door. And that little child of doubt or sadness or fear is standing there. <clears throat> and um, like, what are you going to say to them? This, this is really the question. What do we say to them? Do, do we say, why are you here? Well, why are you here, sadness? Why are you here, fear? Doubt, why, why are you here? I, 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 I wanted to let you go. I want to let you go. I'm trying to let you go. I'm trying to be spiritual. I'm trying to, I want to, I'm trying to let you go. Imagine saying that. Imagine saying that to a child. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't say that. You wouldn't, you wouldn't say that. What, what does that child long for on the deepest level? And what they long for is to be, to be let in, to be allowed in to presence, to be allowed into their true home, to be allowed into the present moment. So, <clears throat> What happens when we, as I said in the poem, what happens when we let go of the very idea of letting go? Imagine we just, for a moment, we just erase that idea from our minds that there was this thing called letting go. Then again, as I suggested in the poem, we, we might then perhaps let that child in, let love in, or let love go in. Let love go in to that human experience. Let 
love go into that vulnerability. Let love go into that doubt. Let love go into that fear, into that rage. Forget about letting go of it or releasing it or transcending it or going beyond it or all of these spiritual ideas, these concepts that are just really in the mind. And ultimately they, they don't work. They don't work. We try for years and years and years to release and let go and be free from. And it's, and in the end, it becomes exhausting, this, this search, this, this war. Actually, it's a war. It's a war against our humanity. It's a war. And so we end the war and we, we let go of letting go and re we release the very idea of releasing. <laughs> we release the very idea of releasing. It's exhausting trying to release a fear, trying to release a, a sorrow, trying to release a doubt. I've, I've met people who have spent thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars going from teacher to therapist to retreat, trying to release their grief. And for some people, it never actually occurred to them that what they were actually doing is, is running from it, running from it. So what happens when we release the very idea of release, let go of letting go, and we actually turn towards that guest, as Rumi talked about in his beautiful poem, The, the Guest House. We actually turn towards that guest, that doubt, that fear, that shame, and we let love in. We, we infuse that part of us with our awareness and our breath. And this is meditation. This is what meditation really is. Meditation has nothing to do with trying to escape your experience or transcend your experience, because then it just becomes another addiction. That's what addiction is, is the running away from our vulnerable, sensitive human experience, running away from pain. And again, there's no judgment here. We do this in complete innocence. You know, we just don't know. Like Jesus said, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. We know not what we do. If we knew what we were doing, we wouldn't do it to ourselves, cause so much suffering, you know, splitting ourselves from ourselves in this way. So, the invitation of true meditation, and this is what I teach really, is, is to let go of letting go, release the idea of releasing, and actually let awareness, let, which is love, go in. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. Let it go in to your experience, infusing your ordinary human experience with love, with acceptance, with, with awareness. So many words for the same thing, really, which is, which is love. And here's the, the wonderful paradox. Here is the wonderful paradox of letting go. When you let go of letting go and you're just present, for example, with your sorrow, and you let love go into it and you infuse it with awareness and breath and you make space for it and you allow it, and you remember who you truly are in the midst of it, which, which is that you, you are the one who allows sadness. You are not the sadness. You are the one who allows it. You are the home for it. You are the ocean in which a wave of sadness is, is allowed naturally. And then in that moment, all, all ideas of releasing, the ocean is not interested in releasing any of its waves. The ocean is not, the ocean of consciousness is not interested in letting go of its waves. It doesn't make any sense. It's nonsensical. It stems from a misunderstanding. But paradoxically, of course, and this is what I found in my experience over the years, um, when you're just present with these parts, you give them what they have really come for, which is love. To be remembered, to be recognized as an expression of the ocean, not to be destroyed. We, we go so quickly to try and fix or heal or transform or get rid of. There's, there, there's this other way, you see. And what, what can happen is that the, the, the thought, the sensation, the feeling can begin to let go of you. It's not that you manage to let go of it. It's not that you manage to release it met with love and presence and understanding and friendship, which is what it which which is what it came for, it may begin to let go of you. It may begin to release itself of you. You don't have to let go of it. Your job is not to let go of it. Your job really is to love it, which just means to see it as a beloved part of you, see it as a wave in the ocean of you. And again, this is, this is what we're getting to. This is what true meditation really is. It's the recognition that every um, form in your experience, every thought, every breath, every beating of the heart, every sensation, every feeling from the deepest grief to the most profound joy, 
from from the most profound bliss to the most intense anxiety. Everything that arises moment by moment in your experience is nothing less than an expression of, and again, this is words fail, but it's where words fail, but an expression of the divine, an expression of consciousness. It's this, this is what I mean when I say there's nothing wrong with you on the most profound, deepest level. Um, anyway, let's um, do a short little, yeah, when I say short meditation, if those of you who know me know that brevity is not my forte, but I will try and do a short meditation today because I have a newborn baby that I, I probably should get back to at some point, even though there is no future. <laughs> um, yes, there is no future and there also is. It's very paradoxical. But, and this is what meditation is so wonderful because no, no matter what amount of time we have, we can always just take a few moments to slow down and drop into our experience and, and be really present. And, um, Okay, so I'd just like to invite you, if you feel like it, just to close your eyes, get really comfortable wherever you are. And just invite your attention back into this present moment. And the simple instruction really is to do nothing, to do absolutely nothing with your experience, to let your experience be, to let your experience be as it is, comfortable, uncomfortable, whether you feel tense or relaxed, whether you feel open or tight and closed, let it be. It's the simplest instruction in the universe, and yet it can be the most challenging thing to do, is to let your experience be. So just letting all the busyness and the activity of the day fall away into the background. Let this present moment become the most fascinating thing in the universe. What's here where you are? Just feeling your feet on the ground. Letting your body sink into the chair, into the floor. Just sinking a few millimeters. Letting your arms be heavy, letting your legs be heavy. Letting your body drop into gravity. It's dropping your shoulders a few millimeters, softening your jaw. Just noticing what it feels like to have clothes on your body. Noticing the positions of your hands, the shapes of your hands. Just coming closer to this moment as it is, not trying to change it. We're not trying to have a special experience. Let go of trying to have special experiences, higher experiences. We're not even trying to relax. There's no goal in this meditation. It's just this moment shining brightly exactly as it is. The masterpiece of this moment painting itself. Just noticing your breath now, letting your breath become the most fascinating thing in the universe. Just noticing those rising and falling sensations of the breath. Not trying to control the breath, not trying to change the breath. Just soften any sense of holding around the breath. Just let the body breathe. Let the body breathe itself. Or rather notice how the body is breathing itself right now. Just noticing those rising and falling sensations of the breath in the belly, in the chest, happening all by itself, effortlessly, spontaneously. 
What's breathing you right now is breathing me, is breathing all of us, is breathing every living being, that same cosmic intelligence, that same mystery, the same mystery that makes the ocean tides go in and out, the very same mystery that is breathing you now. And if during this meditation you notice yourself becoming distracted, going off into thought, going off into past, going off into future, that's perfectly okay. That happens. It can happen many times. And each time you can just notice, oh look, I've I've gone off somewhere else. And you can gently bring yourself back for your feet on the ground or just the breath rising and falling. Hear all the sounds of this moment. What can you hear right now? Listening to sounds is a wonderful way of getting present. What can you hear? What's the furthest sound you can hear? Just noticing your mind right now. Is your mind busy? Is it quiet? If your mind is busy and noisy, let it be. If the mind is quiet, peaceful, let it be. We're not trying to stop the mind. We're not trying to let go of the mind. We're not trying to stop thoughts. We're not trying to let go of thoughts. That's just more thoughts. It's just more thoughts telling us we need to let go of other thoughts. So just let all thoughts be here like clouds in the sky, like waves in the ocean. Be the sky, be the ocean. Let the mind be as busy and as noisy as it wants to be. Let go of the idea of letting go, just let, let it be. Let it be, let the mind be, let the noisy mind be. Let the breath be, let the feet be. Let the moment be, not trying to let it go, let it be. And even if, if there's a part of you that wants to let the moment go, or that wants to let a thought go or a feeling go, there's a part of you at war with this moment or doesn't want this moment or wants to change this moment, that's also perfectly okay. We can let that be. We don't even have to let that go. Resistance is welcome here. Frustration is welcome here. Non-acceptance is welcome here. Desire is welcome here. This is a, an unconditionally welcoming field of meditation, presence. Just like the ocean welcomes all of its waves without trying. So just noticing your body right now, how does it feel? Is it feeling relaxed? Is it feeling stressed and tight? Let it be. Is there sadness where you are? Are you in touch with a sense of joy? Or maybe you're in touch with a sense of excitement. Or maybe there's a boredom in you right now. Meditation is about being ruthlessly honest about our experience, not running away from it, not trying to transform it not trying to let it go. If there's boredom here, let it be. If there's frustration here, let it be. If there's tiredness here, let it be. If there's numbness or emptiness here, let it be. Just as an experiment, what happens when you let it be? If there's doubt here, let it be. If there's certainty here, let it be. What 
happens when you just open to your experience as it is? Just allow it. And if you feel that you can't allow it, can you open to even that? Can you open to the non-allowing? Can you allow the non-allowing? Can you accept any non-acceptance that's in you right now? Sometimes we're in touch with a part of us that, in meditation that just really wants to have a different experience. It wants to be out of this moment. You want to be in a different moment. You want to be in a different place. You may even want to be in a different life. That yearning, that longing, that desire can be a burning desire sometimes to, to be elsewhere somewhere else. Can we even slow down together and turn towards that part, the part that wants to be somewhere else? Even that wave is not a mistake. Even that wave is allowed in this ocean. Doesn't mean there's something wrong with you doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. It doesn't mean you're not spiritual. It doesn't mean you're far from enlightenment. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a wave in you that wants to be touched, wants to be met. Can you meet it with your loving presence and your breath? You can feel or imagine your breath moving into your body or moving into a part of your body that feels uncomfortable or tight or tense or painful. Breathing into that aching part, that child that we were talking about, that pain, that boredom, that desire, that longing, that emptiness, that loneliness, infusing it with your breath, your awareness with light, the light of your attention, just welcoming, letting the moment be as it is, letting go of letting go, whatever's here, if tears come, if anger comes, if boredom comes, if resistance comes, if joy comes, moment by moment, whatever thought, whatever sensation, whatever feeling arrives in meditation, arrives in your awareness. Can we just let go of letting go, or trying to fix it, trying to heal it, trying to transform it, trying to transcend it? trying to go beyond it, trying to release it. And let's release ourselves from that burden. Let's release ourselves from the burden of trying to release. Let's let go of the burden of trying to let go. And instead, let, let ourselves go. Release ourselves into the ocean. Allowing all of these waves to come and go, waves of thought, waves of sensation, waves of breath, waves of feeling, waves of sound, moment by moment. Remembering who we are as the ocean, the one who is present to all of this, the one who is aware of all of this, aware of thoughts coming and going, aware of sensations in the body, aware of feelings, aware of doubt, aware of joy. You can just let go of the whole meditation now. You can even let go of the meditation. Stop trying to meditate, stop trying to have a, a better experience. Sometimes there's that subtle push the agenda to have a better experience. Let yourself rest 
Give yourself the gift of resting. Just let yourself rest in the chair or the bed or the ground, wherever you are. Let yourself rest from this exhausting search. Search for answers. The search to be something other than what you are. It's an exhausting fight against this moment. The fight against life. Trying to fix yourself or even heal yourself. Even trying to awaken or trying to become enlightened. Let all of that go. Let all of that fade into the background. Just let yourself be held in this simple moment. As the breath rises and falls, and sensations come and go in the body, thoughts come and go in the mind. You can just give yourself a few moments of sacred rest. Let yourself be held by the ground, by the earth, by the universe itself. So feel free to stay in this field of meditation. Or when you're ready, you can just gently open your eyes and have a little stretch. Ooh. Thank you so much, everyone, for being in that <clears throat> oceanic space of meditation with me. Um, I'm I'm scared to look at the clock to see how long that meditation was. Yes, yes, I thought it might be over twenty minutes. It was meant to be a five minute meditation, but you know, I as I always say, I lose track of time in meditation. Uh, feel free to uh, put in the comments some. Um, tell me in the, in the comments, you know, how you experienced that meditation, if anything was helpful for you, if, uh, if there was something within yourself that you were able to meet or accept or be with in a, in a deeper way, or if there was something you were struggling with. Um, I'll come to the questions in a second in the comments. Let me just remind you about this webinar um, that I'm doing on Tuesday next week. Uh, it's called How to... <laughs> I don't know why that just made me laugh. How to fail. It's called How to Fail Beautifully. Um, and I'll be talking more about this, this shift from um, trying to heal ourselves to learning to hold ourselves. The shift from healing to holding. Um, letting go of ideas of perfection, ideas of how we should be and embracing ourselves exactly as we are. I'll be talking about a bit more about meditation and why your current meditation practice might not be working. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'll be talking about this idea of, um, beginning again in every moment, uh, how no matter what's happening in our lives, no matter how much we think we've screwed our lives up or how badly things are going or how much drama there is, there's always an opportunity to begin again. It, it, literally the present moment is a new beginning of life. So in meditation, that's meditation is kind of a reboot. It's kind of about coming out of our dreams and our fantasies and coming out of the conditioning, coming out of our stories about life, past and future, and coming back to reality, grounding, regrounding ourselves in the body, in reality, in this moment. Um, so yeah, this webinar is completely free. You just need to sign up to access it. Um, so there's a link. There's a link, there should be a link pinned in the comments. Um, but I also think my assistant, Malia, is gonna drop the link into the comments. 
Um, but yeah, uh, I, I think I think it's pinned. I think I think it's pinned. Um, it's on Tuesday, April twenty fifth at um, seven p.m. London time. So I'd love for you to join me there. If you can't join live, we will send you a recording. So if you sign up for the free webinar, um, if you can't join live, you will get a recording. Um, I think that's that. Let me go to the comments. Um, bloody hell, we've been going for thirty five minutes. You know, it's funny these these things. I always start these um, broadcasts. This also happens on retreats. Thinking, I haven't got anything. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got anything left to say. I have nothing to say. I feel like I've been well. I've been doing this for like fifteen years now, and I feel that at the start of every meeting, every retreat, every broadcast, I've got nothing to say. I've got nothing to say. And then uh, <laughs> words come. It's quite incredible out of, uh, I guess, out of the not knowing, you know, um, you know, out of the not knowing, you know. Well, uh, quickly, what I was going to say as well, you know, I was just thinking about, as I was just talking about that before, I was thinking about my partner, Alice, while she was in labor. And she was, uh, you know, she was telling me about the, the, the contractions, about this, you know, intense searing pain that she was experiencing and you know it was it was amazing because she'd been preparing for the labor obviously for many 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 months and doing all learning all kinds of techniques and relaxation techniques and um, um hypnobirthing and, and you know all kinds of uh, things that she could do <laughs> whilst it was happening to to help and she said that what was incredible is that ev everything just went out the window like all of the techniques and the practices. And this is a bit like a bit like spirituality. It's a bit like true spirituality. In the end, all the techniques and the methods and the practices just go out the window. And she said the only thing that actually worked was just to totally surrender. Just to surrender. To let to let go. To let go and let life carry her. You know, to to let go of all the techniques and the practices and and the methods, and I'm not I'm not saying that those wouldn't work for some people, of course. But Al it was just interesting to hear what Alice was saying that, you know, in in the midst of that 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 intense, near unbearable sensation <clears throat> in the body, those contractions are intense. <laughs> um, the all she could do was just surrender. You know, and and let let life take her. You know, the the ego. There was no room for the ego. There was no room for conditioning. There was no room for past and future. Really, it's like a burning up of past and future. Um. So. Yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. Okay. Um. Let's see here, Linus. That's a lovely name, Linus Luminous. It's like your real name. It said you experienced some cramp in the solar plexus. Some blockage is there for many years now. Extremely painful at times, turning into anger often. Thank you for sharing that, Linus. Linus, um, I, I just want to, yeah, I want to say just a couple of words about this idea of blockage. Um, <clears throat> so it's quite interesting. I, you know, I've talked to a lot of people over the years, and they and and they say things like, "Hey Jeff, I've, I'm trying to meditate." Or I'm trying to heal, but there's the, I have this blockage. Um, actually, this actually it was just I think it was last last week. On you know I do this uh, weekly live membership thing. I, I do I do these live broadcasts once a week, and you can become a member. And oh, I'm, am I doing an advert? I, th I think I'm just I think I'm doing an advert for it. It wasn't meant to. Be, it honestly wasn't meant to be an advert. It's, but anyway, if you're interested, it's uh, jefffosteronline.com. And you can find out all about it. We're actually um, reopening membership, um, so you 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 can join uh, jefffosteronline.com. But um, God, that really did sound like an advert. Um, <laughs> but there was this this lady who no, was it was sorry, I, I, was it a man or a lady? My mem my memory is so bad. I think it was a guy. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It was a human being. There was a human being, and they were talking about. Um, that they had this this blockage to meditation like they they would and i'm sure many of you can relate to this like they, they would sit in meditation and try and be present and try and watch the breath and try and do all the things you're meant to do 
but this person was saying that they um there was just this block there was just this block and it was interesting because from my perspective there is no such thing as a a block to meditation there's no such thing as a as a block to the present moment just in the same way that you think about it no no wave in the ocean can actually block the ocean. A wave may be intense and tight and contracted, but it's never actually a block. So it's just interesting to look at our language, our language, because language is very powerful. When we when we label something a block, or when we say this part of me, this this sensation, this feeling is in the way, that it's getting in the way. It's like, and if I could just get rid of it, that's what we really mean when we call something a blockage. Or when we when we label it a blockage, or we when we label it as getting in the way, what we really mean again is, I don't want it. I want to get rid of it. <clears throat> if I could just get rid of it, then there would be freedom. If I could just get rid of it, so it's the same thing as letting go. Really, it's language is very interesting. It's very powerful. You know, these words are like magic spells. You know, so you 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 call it a blockage then you experience it as a blockage. You, you, you say it's in the way, then you experience it as being in the way. But the question is, is it really a blockage? Is it really in the way? Maybe if you just take away the word blockage, if you take away the, the phrase in the way, um, or, you know, what, whatever, whatever other words we have for it. Um, maybe this is just a part of you that is longing for love. It's not actually in the way. It's actually calling you. It's actually your meditation teacher. It's your guru. What seems to be in the way, a thought, a sensation, a feeling, may just be your, your greatest teacher. It may be your your guru. Like some people say that, you know, this, this grief, if I could just get rid of this grief, this grief is in the way, this grief is a blockage. And then you're kind of waiting, you're like waiting for the blockage to unblock. But what if it's not a blockage? You take away the word blockage, take away the label, take away the word, take away the thought, take away the image, and come back to what it actually is. It's a, you know, it could be a tightness in the chest or in 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 the belly, a, a contracted sensation. So be present with it. Allow those sensations. Get curious. Send cu curious awareness into those sensations. Breathe into those sensations. Maybe it's just a part of you that's that's longing for love, longing for attention, longing for breath. Maybe you'll begin to see that they're actually that it's not blocking anything. What would it be blocking? What would it be, what would it be blocking? It's life. It's an expression of life. You know, so that's just an interesting experiment. You know, to um, to just take a, take away the word blockage. Maybe it's actually the the idea that it's a blockage that's the blockage. It's the same thing as like letting go. The idea of letting go is what's in the what seems to be in the way. When we get let go of the idea of letting go, maybe there's nothing to let go of. That's the paradox. When we release the very idea of releasing, maybe there's nothing to release. I don't want to release my sad. I don't want to release my grief anymore. My sad. I don't want to release it. I want to feel it. I don't want to let go of it. I want to let it be. I want to let it live. I want to celebrate it. I want to celebrate it. Just like, you know, I was just, I was with my newborn daughter. Um, oh, actually, she's not newborn anymore. She's three days old, which is quite old, I think. She's she's very wise. But I was, you know, spending time with her, just kind of holding her in my arms. And she's so alive. You know, in one moment, she's screaming. Next moment, she's totally restful, totally at peace. The next moment, she's trying to suck something. The next moment she's uh, looking around the room. The next moment she, you know, there's a there's a <laughs> sound and something comes out of her bum. The next moment, like she's so alive. She's so in the present moment. Um, and uh, I completely forgot. That was supposed to be a metaphor for something, I think. I think that somehow relates to what I was just saying. That That was, that is meant to be a metaphor, but it's like, all of those movements, each each one of those movements, the five, six thing I've just mentioned, they are all loved. The moments of stillness, the moments of crying, 
the moments of sucking, the moments of looking around the room, the moments of the explosions, you know, the 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 moments of drip saliva coming out of her mouth. All of those movements are sacred. All of those movements are meant to be, and they're 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 um um. You, well, you know what I'm saying. So if we could begin to see our own insights, our thoughts, sensations, feelings, our joy, our doubt, our anger in 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 the same way, you know, that to me that's true spirituality. It's finding the the divine in the ordinary, the sacred in the profane, so that they're, they're not two anymore. This is the a non-dual teaching. That they're, they're not two. You know. Okay. Um, thank you. So, I think it's Sasuki. Sorry, I'm terrible at pronouncing names. It's, your videos help me in a time of my depression. Thank you so much. Bless you. Um, yeah, Philip, she's simply being without a gap of resistance on her part, at least. Her body is simply active. Very true. Yes, three days is still is still a newborn. That is true. Um Let's see here. Let's see here. Yes, Ruth. Ruth says, please, can you share on Tuesday something about effortless rest when we're so exhausted that even relaxation and sleep is difficult? Yeah, I will be. I will be. I will be talking about the 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 nature of rest. You know, and hit right. So here's the thing about rest. Rest isn't something that you can do. <clears throat> when you it's like the when you try and rest. And I'm not saying this is wrong, but what we tend to do is we we make rest into a goal. How and then the question is how do I get from where I am, which is restless? I feel restless and tired and tight. How do I get from where I am? How do I get from this moment to a different moment? A moment of rest. So the mind, well, the mind turns everything into a goal. The mind turns rest into a goal. The mind turns enlightenment into a goal, which is totally crazy. The mind turns spiritual awakening into a goal, again, which is a complete misunderstanding. So, um, I mean, enlightenment is not a destination. It's not a goal. It's not a state. It's not somewhere... It's not a, a special state of being you can enter into. That that's all uh, the fantasy of enlightenment. When we talk about enlightenment, what we're really talking about is remembering who we truly are, and who you truly are is the light itself. You can't reach the light. It's not about reaching the light or finding the light or trying to become the light or following some guru who tells you that they are the light. That's the problem, not the solution. That's the addiction, looking for the light outside of ourselves. Again, it's not wrong, but in the end, it becomes exhausting. And sometimes I think that exhaustion is necessary. You know, we 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 strive and we seek and we try to become enlightened, to become famous, to become popular, to become rich. All these things we think we're gonna gonna make us happy, and we exhaust ourselves doing it. You know, for, for me, some of you know, for for me, years ago, yeah, trying. I became exhausted um, trying to become enlightened. Trying to become spiritually enlightened became exhausting. But then what happened one day is I think I turned towards that exhaustion. It's The exhaustion is sacred. You know, Most people on this planet, I think, are exhausted. They're just not aware of it. They just keep running from it. They're running, 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 running. But when you, sometimes, you know, life forces you to stop and take a good, authentic look at yourself and, and and to get in touch with that exhaustion, to feel that exhaustion. Maybe that exhaustion is intelligent. Maybe what that, that exhaustion is trying to say is, hey, what the hell are you doing? What the hell are you trying to become? What the hell are you looking for? You're not going to find it out there. That's what the exhaustion might be saying is, hey, slow down slow down, come closer, remember who you truly are. That might be the message at the heart of our exhaustion. Remember who you truly are. We even get exhausted trying to rest. We'd even turn rest into a into a goal. So what, what I talk about is the true nature of rest, which is 
um, it's not a goal. It's it's a uh, it's who you truly are. You know who you truly are is 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 rest itself. But you can rest in the midst of restlessness. You can rest with restlessness. You can rest with sorrow. You can rest with anger. You can rest with doubt. So rest is no longer a destination or a goal or something that you have to do. It's rest is a remembering. You know, it's it's presence itself. There's something within you right now, right now in this moment that is already deeply at rest. It always has been. It is rest itself. That still silent place within you that has never gone away. It's never changed. It, it's it's been there throughout your life in in the in the days of great joy, the days of great sorrow. Um, in the midst of the noise of your life, there is this still silent place, and it's it's always at rest. It's who you truly are. It's presence itself. So it's not a destination. It's not a place you can reach. It's not something to become. It's something that we can remember, but we're going to have to slow down. Where we're gonna, and some of us may have to get exhausted first. You know, life may have to exhaust us until we get to the point where we're willing to slow down and look. It's an act of great courage, I think, in in this world, in the, this fast and noisy world where there's a million distractions and everyone's just telling you, "Keep going, keep going, keep going. Work harder, harder, more, more, faster, faster." It's an act of great courage to say, "No, actually, um, I'm going to go within. I'm going to." slow down. I'm going to go within. I'm tired of the distractions. I'm tired of running away from myself. I'm tired of trying to become something that I'm not. I'm trying. I'm tired of pretending to be something that I'm not. I'm tired of trying to become spiritually enlightened, whatever that means. So um, anyway, I will talk more about that on the webinar. Thank, thank you so much, Ruth, for that um, question. Guys, I'm going to have to go. Um, I promised Alice it would be an hour at most. <laughs> this is real spirituality, you know. It's like that's actually that's that is what I was thinking today. I was like, wow, this is like this is real spirituality. This is what it's all about. It's it's just doing the ordinary things of the day. It's it's like cleaning the toilet, you know, it's making dinner, it's taking out the the trash bags, it's um, you know, trying to find a a sock that's gone missing in the in the in in the laundry. It's it's to the mind. These things are so ordinary. The mind might even say that they're non important. They're not important, or they're less than. But actually, seen through the eyes of presence, these these are sacred movements. This is this is um um as sacred as the most holy sacred place on the planet. It's right there you with that sock on the floor. It's you scrubbing the toilet. That, the same sacredness on the top of Mount Sinai or whatever, or in the tomb of the most spiritual of spiritual of spiritual spirituals, <laughs> you know, that same sacredness is, it's you on your hands and knees scrubbing the floor. It's you making a cup of tea for your dad or for your partner or your friend. It's, um, the sacred is truly in the ordinary, and I've, you know, I've past few days I've truly been reminded of that. It's um, enlightenment is it's not a special state. It's just it's it's you lighting up your surroundings just with your interest, with your curiosity, with just it's just being here, you know, being here, not being off somewhere else, distracted, addicted you know, pretending to be something that you're not. It's 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 you whole, not split from yourself. No, it's not you scrubbing the floor, but wanting to be somewhere else. And I'm not and I'm not I'm also not saying it's wrong or bad to desire. But if we're talking about wholeness, we're talking about no longer being split. It's not half of me over here and half of me wanting to be over there. The, those two halves are, are one. You know, so it's that's what they say in uh, in Zen. I think there's a there's a there's an old Zen story 
or Zen Koan or something. Like the student asks asks the master. It's something like this. I'm probably getting it wrong, but the student asks the master, you know, what? Hey, what's enlightenment? What's enlightenment? And the master says, oh, "Well, have you finished eating?" And the student goes, "Yes." And the master says, "Well, scrub your clean 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 your bowl. Scrub your bowl." What? What? Where's the where's the the great wise spiritual answer? What what the master was trying to point to is that it's, no, like you're you're too in your head about this stuff. Just clean the bowl, but be there, be there. Clean the bowl with the fullness of your being in your full presence, and and then you'll understand. You know. Um. Anyway, I will. Um. Sorry, I didn't get to many questions. Um. But I, what I will do is, obviously, I'm going to read all of your comments. Um, maybe tomorrow, I'll read all of your comments uh, and your yeah. Thank you for your beautiful messages and your questions and your congratulations. And um, yeah, so just to recap, web free webinar for all of you. Uh, sign up link should be there somewhere. It's on Tuesday. Um, if you can't join live, you'll get a replay. And for those of you interested in my um, live weekly membership, um, jefffosteronline.com. I uh, would love to see you there. If you, if you enjoy being with me live and enjoy my meditations and my talks, and um, you may enjoy uh, Jeff Foster live. Um, okay. Lots of love. When will there be another YouTube live? Well, um, I can't tell you exactly because um, there is no future. <laughs> well, but um yes soon hopefully i um yeah i want to do some more facebook lives and some youtube lives just to just to you know connect with all of you and off offer you this this free content i've got loads of other um videos on youtube i've got like probably tens maybe hundreds of hours i don't know of, of content on youtube and loads of content on my Facebook page. I've got like thousands and thousands of pages of writing on my Facebook page, if you're interested. Um, but yeah, I hope to do a new, um, another YouTube live soon, another Facebook live soon. Um, lots of love to you all. Lots of love. Thanks you. Thank you, Divya. I really needed this. Oh, that warms my heart. Thank you. That's why, you know what, I've always thought to myself is if by doing these live sessions and by writing books and doing retreats and stuff like if I can help just one person you know in the Talmud it, it said um they say uh he he or she who saves a single life saves the whole world he who saves a single life saves the whole world saves the world entire so it's something like that. It's like it's you know I I can't I have no idea how to save the world. I I have no idea how to even help the world. But what I can do is just show up, you know, and share some of these teachings that have saved my life. Um, this medicine that I've found, and if if someone you know on the planet is is helped, is touched, is inspired. Or it makes you look at life in a different way, or it helps you find, you know, a deeper sense of self-acceptance, helps you turn towards your vulnerable humanity, your your pain, your sorrow, your loneliness in, in, in more deeply. It help helps you love yourself more deeply. Um then that's it's a beautiful thing, you know? It's a beautiful thing. Ultimately, I can't fix anybody. I don't have the answers for everybody. I mean, you have all the answers within yourself, but maybe I can just reflect your own inherent <clears throat> beauty, your own inherent worth um, back to you. You know, I can be some kind of mirror. Um, yeah. Thank you, Joanna. Your poems are healing many times that Oh, it helped me with my falling apart and shattering. Thank you so much. Oh, beautiful, Joanna. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Lots of love to you all. I'm going to go back to my lovely uh, partner and baby, and I will see you all soon. 
Lots of love. Now, if I can find the button to end this, it will be a miracle. I think there's a big red button somewhere. Press the big red button. There it is. <laughs> lots of love. Lots of love, everyone. Bye-bye.